The fanfare from James Morrison. <laughs> wait, wait, go again. Do I look at you? <laughs> Tell me when James was born. Tell me about that. Um, James was about six days overdue. He was 52 centimetres long, 3.36 kilograms. He had a, a bigger head than usual. <laughs> Mum was telling me that you guys are trying to have a home birth. Oh, I was never happy about that. It was always a bad decision, I thought. We got given a inflatable pool with a warmer element type thing, so I set it all up. All the way through the pregnancy, I'd planned to have a home birth because I didn't believe that pregnancy is a sickness and I didn't want to go to hospital. Women have been having babies, you know, for thousands of years and they didn't have hospitals. I was pretty happy when it didn't work out the way mum wanted it and we went to the hospital for proper help where babies should be born in case there's problems there. Yeah. It was pretty hectic and I think <laughs> your first, first birth is pretty hectic, you know. I didn't have any drugs so um, that was my plan as well, you know. I, wanted, I didn't want any drugs to go through to the baby and uh, it was pretty painful. Hmm. But you know, once I had that baby in my arms, I was pretty happy. I looked at his beautiful face and um, it was all worth it. I want you to tell me a bit about when James was born. Um, I don't know. I wasn't there. <laughs> Believe it or not, I was actually born five years later. Uh, what was James like as a young kid? Young lad? Yeah. Pretty happy, easy going. He was always a very um, inquisitive little boy. Unaware. <laughs> he loved being outside, he loved water, he loved the sand pit, climbing on things. And James wanted to go outside and catch bugs and lizards, but he called them dillards. He wanted to go outside and catch a dillard. Got along with the dog. There was a time there, you remember Jadie? Yeah. He, uh, him and Jadie were pretty good mates, Jadie looked after him. There was one time there that um, he had a poo outside and uh, Jadie ate it and your mum came out screaming and he said, it's all right mum, Jadie likes it. <laughs> uh, what was James into when he was a young kid? Um, very much like army men, guns, I know he liked Thomas the Tank Engine, big fan of Lego, Star Wars. Um... Uh, he definitely into Spider-Man, not so much Spider-Man, he was into the villains. He liked to be um, the Green Goblin, that's him, yeah. He had his little suit, he loved it, absolutely loved it. He thought that was everything, yeah. He got into character well, yeah. <laughs> uh, how well did James play the role of the oldest child? When you were on the scene, he uh, wanted us to take you back to the hospital for a refund because he just couldn't believe there was two people getting all the attention. But... And he said, take him back to the hospital. <laughs> yeah, that was probably only for a couple of days. But um, after that, he quite enjoyed uh, being in the older brother, I think. Yeah. Oh, he was, um, he was a good big brother, you know, he was particularly, as he got a little bit older, you know, 
But when Holly was a baby, he was very attentive and very caring. You know, you know, I could say to him, you know, to rock her on the little bouncer or to give her a toy and he'd play with her and talk to her and keep her occupied. Yeah, he loved playing with you. Yeah, he was, he was never bossy or mean or a bully. It wasn't in his nature. And he always, you know, you were always his best friend growing up, you know, when you were little and at home. He was always there to drive me around once he got his license and would play in the pool with me if I wanted someone to play with. Yeah, I think he was a good old brother. Best he could be, I think. What does that mean? <laughs> what do you mean? That's the inference. Yeah, better the, than you. That's the inference. That's a lie. Uh, how dedicated was James to his, his physicality? Mm -hmm. His fitness and stuff. How dedicated was he? Very dedicated, I feel. Like I think he just got to an age where um, he was being picked on a little bit for being a chubby kid and made a decision himself that I don't want to be this chubby person anymore. That he sort of made a bit of a commitment to himself that he wanted to um, lose weight and get fit and be strong. <laughs> I think, you know, he looked on YouTube for some, um, uh, I don't know, like role models or... He started uh, looking through the internet and found a guy called Carly Love Muscle. I can wipe my own ass! <laughs> I do remember we talked a lot about Carly Muscle. You're okay. You're so sad. You sound like a bitch, nigga. James started changing his diet and getting into a bit of fitness and boxing and to his credit is turned it right around and I wish I could take a leap from his book. James also did um, surf lifesaving, cadets, army cadets, and they, they did a lot of um, camping. James was a known troublemaker. Uh, is that man. a known troublemaker? Yeah. He was not a known troublemaker. He definitely was a known troublemaker. He was not a known troublemaker. James was a bit of a known troublemaker. Would you agree with that? Yes. James was a known troublemaker. Where you are. What was one of his big mistakes growing up? The biggest mistake I think he made was wanting to go and camp in the back paddock several years ago here at Grafton and it was quite a windy dry summer and i told him no matter what you cannot have a fire don't have a fire uh, jamie made it very clear to him like you can't light a fire you know, it's too windy you cannot control it yes dad so i got i went down the back i was doing some cattle work and stuff and i could see some smoke <sighs> We could see some smoke and where there's smoke, there's usually fire and... What, 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 what's going on there? Anyway, I started driving towards the smoke and seeing James running towards me with panic. Next thing I see, James was running flat out from the back paddock. He started a fire against my advice. And it was picking up and it was pretty fierce. So um, I made the phone call to the um, Country Fire Authority and they turned up very quickly and they were able to uh, put it out and contain it and it was very, very lucky. That could have got away and burnt down multiple houses and farms around the area and killed heaps of animals. And could have killed him? Could have killed him and other people, yeah. Um, obviously that one was sort of like a let's bag out James sort of question. Um, so what are some of James's best qualities? Oh, James has got a lot of good qualities, you know. He has got a heart of gold. He honestly doesn't want to hurt anyone's feelings and just wants the best for everyone and is willing to help out no matter what. Really good older brother. He was very honest. Like, he told the truth when he knew he had to. He was strong. Independent, I feel like. He did a lot of things for himself, bought his own food, like, took himself to the gym, he did a lot of things like that for himself. And he's a very funny person, very humorous person. Get the gist. What are your aspirations for James going into the future? I really hope James gets into the army. I think he really wants to, and I think it'd be really good for him. Um, 
and becoming a medic in the army and then maybe after the army he could do something still in the medical field just like in a hospital or something I think he'd really enjoy that but no whatever James decides to do he'll be a success whether he you know gets into the army or not whether he st if he stays at Bunnings I feel like he would possibly become a store manager I think he's um, you know there's there's no limits to what he's what he can do I hope that he meets a life partner someday and that, he, that he's happy. Yeah, one day maybe get a husband, adopt a few kids. No matter what he does, I think he is a sort of person that will put his 100% effort into it and the gratification will feed his efforts and he'd be a very happy person. Uh, well, thanks for having the interview, Dad. Thank you for having me. Cheers, Dad. Happy birthday, big fella. <laughs> cheers. Well, cheers for your participation in my interview. Perfect. You're all good to go. I'm good to go. Yeah. Yeah, you're done now. Thanks, Mum. Anyways. So I am finishing up editing this and filming my part at 1 a.m. the day of your birthday. And I just wanted to put in it like a director's note uh, that we didn't even get to touch on everything because if we did, you know, this thing would end up being like hours long. Um, you know, we get to tell a couple stories that everyone knows. Like when you ran away and had to get picked up by the cops. The crazy night you had out in the town in Grafton. Or even about that time where you wrote and published your own book. And it sold really well. Oh, there's a few that only me and you know. Um, like how you managed to get such a huge DVD collection when you didn't have a job. <laughs> uh, the happy 21st big guy. Uh, and you know, I hope you can cherish this forever. No. Uh, have a good one, big girl. I tell a nigga don't dick ride, don't blink ride, leave it to the double thick thighs, switch sisters. Drop it down and wobble, wobble up, mommy boot it up, she get down and gobble, gobble up, cause my money up. Slide, slide in the belly trucker, the rave trucker, your bestie is a dick.